So, Byron, it is very late on a Friday, but the amount of bullshit in the world just never wants to end. Have you seen this letter by Diskim? I have seen the letter by Diskim. You've got to be honest, like, I think we're all kind of used to seeing this kind of racial bullshit. Um, I would it's agree. On Twitter. I mean, I would agree we're used to the racial bullshit from corporates, but this is actually so blatant. I thought, let's let's read a little bit of it for our audience just to see how blatant it actually is. Uh, so it is definitely from Diskim. It's been verified through numerous sources, no, notably uh, Dirk Hatterman, who's the CEO of Solidarity. He's the one that put this out. And he and Diskim says, following a review of their employment equity profile, it's a disaster for them. It's inadequate for them. Because they're growing at such a fast rate, uh, any appointments other than white, just they just don't cut it. The ratio between white and black counts a lot. So when there's no suitable black candidate and a white is appointed, we need, in their words, several blacks to maintain the status quo. Imagine referring to your staff as several blacks. I mean, what is this? I mean, come on. That, that cannot be corporate speak or so blatant, but apparently it is right there in black and yeah, white. Yeah, but it kind, of, it kind of is, mate, because, you know, I'm, I'm going to now put my CEO hat on because I am a CEO of a corporate. And so I know, I know more or less kind of what's going on and I can see where he's coming from. So I'm going to tell you the CEO position, then you're going to tell me why it's bullshit. But so from his perspective, obviously, he's just got to worry about the compliance of the business. So there's certain compliance that he has to follow. He's obviously, he's a he's got a business that's on the JSC. Uh, and full disclosure, I actually have shares in this game. So boo to me. So Traitor. the whole point. Yeah, sorry. So the whole, the whole point of it is obviously what he's now going to have to do is he's going to get all the requirements of being listed on the, the JSC. And some of those requirements are appointed both by the JSC itself and the FSP or the FSB, the Financial Services Board. The Financial Services Board will, and since this whole kind of new dawn has happened, we have seen numerous, should we say, regulatory changes around BEE. Noticeably, a lot of them are pitting process is now in place given that we are expecting to see the employment equity act be enforced sometime next year the current suggestions are it may be signed by the president by the end of the year and then as you know underneath the new rules what it will do is it will allow the minister to come up with some bullshit figures and go well you've got to hit those pencil test numbers so a lot of these guys have now three pronged approaches they've got the fs B, who's telling them that they have to have certain representation. You have the JSC, who is telling them they have to have certain levels of representation. And then they're also expecting the rules to change with the Employment Equity Act. So what they now know is they know more or less kind of what bean countering they're going to need. And what they don't want to be is they don't want to get to the end of the cycle and then get told, well, you know, you need to hit these plans because as a JSC listed company, Obviously, the unions are going to go after them. So they're trying to put plans in place now to make sure that they are compliant with their requirements, which is exactly what I I would expect their CEO of a JSC listed company to do, which is to follow the rules, put processes sure. in place to ensure that they are meeting it so that there isn't going to be any, should we say, sudden shocks to both the business, the structure of the business and the share price. Share price is important. So they don't want to be in the media for all the wrong reasons, which is we're not following the regime bullshit and following the right amount of bean countering. So that's kind of where it's come from. Sure. So I understand the CEO position. I understand that mm -hmm. uh, the regime wants X and therefore the CEO wants X to happen for them. Uh, my, my fundamental problem with all of this is, if we go back to the letter, there's a moratorium on the appointment of all white individuals whether it be internal promotions or external appointments and applies to every single managerial level junior senior middle whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but you got to but you got to understand why that is and that's because according to the rules you get more be points for a management position than say a junior member so you, you actually get if you've got your company full of let's say black individuals at the lower corporate level but all your managers or your senior managers if they're all kind of white then you actually get a lower score even though the managers might be of a lower number than the overall workers now part of that is to do with obviously the 
the B B E E E E, you know, the broad based uh, Black Economic Empowerment Rules. Sure. And they will look at either the ownership of a company in terms of its composite on how many black people own the company, but you can't do that on a JSC listed company because obviously it's publicly traded. So what they will tend to do is the the rules kind of flip a little bit and then they'll talk about control. So who controls the business? Mm. So it'll be around the management of the business. So clearly what this game is identifying is that in order to hit that like level one, level two kind of BE rules, they need to have, well, quite a lot of blacks in management positions. So that's why they're saying they're putting a moratorium on black man, on white management. They sure. need to boost up their bean countering. All right. Now, listen, I accept these are the rules, right? I accept mm-hmm. all of that. The, the fundamental issue that we have at hand is the rules are a institutional racism. Number two, they moral. And number three, you are basically a puppet of the ANC regime, which hates you, Diskem. I think we need to realize this. The ANC hates you, Diskem. You're a private corporation run by white people, and you provide a private service better than anything the state can do. The ANC hates you. So for Diskem to say, here's a regime that hates us, let's enforce all the bullshit rules, which, by the way, those rules are the reasons why you are not getting your share price up. They are the reasons why your profits are down. They are the reasons why your revenue is impacted. It's because you keep following the regime at every single step. And this is just another example of that. And it needs to end somewhere. And unfortunately, the ANC is not going to suffer for it. You're going to suffer for it because people are not going to start boycotting your store because of the institutionalized racism of the rules that you wish to follow. It is a simple moral argument in this case. BS, the rules are bullshit. Follow them yeah, at your peril. We've, we've talked about this before because obviously from the position of this game, as I, if I put my CEO hat on, look, the guy's following the rules, mate. And he probably doesn't agree with the rules, which is why his letter comes across actually rather cass. And if you, or rather crass. And if you read the letter, he's basically going, ah, I've got too many whites and eaten blacks. So he is literally talking bean country. He's not talking about people on their merits. There's no meritocracy here. It is purely bean country. And that, in my opinion, from a moral perspective, outside of the state rules, actually does a disservice to black people because it basically says, well, you're nothing more than a bean counter. You know, there's the token black guy. You're the token black guy. So nobody wants to feel like I'm the token black guy and I've got imposter syndrome. Like I, I want to feel if I'm in the business, I'm there for the right reasons, which is I'm good at my job and therefore I got promoted. This doesn't do a service to the black people employed in the business. However, this game feels clearly as a JSC listed company, they've got to follow the rules. And the rules are unfortunately put in place by a corrupt government. The problem comes in where the rules conflict with, should we say, social norms, what society expects from the businesses they deal with. And let's face it, you know, the, the, the ANC keep telling us that the, that the economy is all about what monopoly capital and the only people in this country that has money are apparently the white people. That's the ANC approved narrative, not mine. So you have to kind of think about it of why would you annoy the customers you have if you know that the only people that actually have money that are spending it in this game are apparently white people because they're the only ones with money. So coming out with these rules is clearly going to annoy your customer base. It's almost like the ANC narrative of, oh, it's only white monopoly capital that spends money in this game might actually just be bullshit. And if you identify it as being bullshit, well, why are you following the rules? I mean, there does come a point where you should just call the rules out for what they are. Bullshit. So, yeah. Yeah, but that's, no, but, but absolutely. that's corporate South Africa, man. No, it is corporate South Africa, and this is why this video is so important. You know, institutionalized racism is wrong. We are not racist people, Byron and I. We are definitely not racist. We don't like institutional racism. This is an example of it. And most importantly, right, if we accept that apartheid was institutionalized racism, which it certainly was, guess what the whites did? They gave it up, Right. They gave it up. The end of apartheid through the referendum was one of the greatest things to ever happen in South Africa because they gave it up without even a struggle because they knew it was a moral thing to do. Everyone should take that and use it for themselves. Do the moral thing Mm. for once. Because if you do the moral thing, customers, profits, everything actually goes up, believe it or not. But if you keep on following the regime, 
to the death knell where it's taking the economy, you're going to be a Muppet and you're going to be a moron and you're going to look like you're nothing more than an ANC stooge. And that is exactly what corporate South Africa is for the most part, especially if they don't take any other thing into account other than what the ANC tells them to do. Yeah, and I'd agree, I'd agree with that. I mean, I think I think the biggest problem that you've got in South Africa is really the way that the regime have pushed the narrative. So as you know, that you know everybody kind of goes, well, it was only really the ANC that was responsible for freedom in South Africa, and you know it must be the blacks in the ANC that did it, as if there were no whites in the ANC, and there were. I mean, there's been whole movies done around them. So, and as there have been movies around the blacks in the ANC, so that there, there were a variety of should we say, the population represented in the anti-apartheid struggle. It wasn't just black people fighting against it. And when, you know, one of the things that isn't very well publicized is actually around the end of apartheid was, as you very rightly said, there was a national referendum and a vote that went on to say, do we get rid of it? And everybody went, yeah, it's probably about time. So the role of the, should we say, the white South African in ending apartheid seems to have been forgotten. And then obviously the argument now used as well the only reason we said yes is because we want to hold on to our wealth but south africans haven't got richer under an ANC government we're seeing record uninflation record amounts of people are immigrating people can't get jobs because of being countering you know the rand doesn't go as far as it was you know and just before apartheid the parity between the dollar and the rand was like five rand to a dollar man like you, you can't get that now it's now like nearly 18 19 rand to a dollar so the currency and the strength of the currency hasn't got stronger. South Africans are not historically richer underneath an ANC, South Af underneath an ANC government. And that doesn't matter who they are, white, black, who cares. But I suppose the counter argument that you would have around giving up the rules is that there is still a amount of institutionalized wealth that was gained in the Whitey's hands through a white government which is why in order to have equality between people, we still need all these rules. And that's really kind of the narrative that needs to be squashed. Yeah, because it's bullshit, right? It is bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's absolute bullshit. If you want wealth, build it yourself, right? Do what the Jews did. But that takes time. But the Jews weren't, you know, like the Jews in South Africa are a great example to follow. When they arrived here as refugees, the Afrikaners didn't like them. The Anglos didn't trust them. So what did the Jews do? They built their own boating clubs. They built their own businesses. They hired everyone who's Jewish. They built their own synagogues, right? The Jews did it. You can't have something that's built by others and then you just want a piece of it for reparational purposes, right? This anglo size version. That's the communist way, mate. No, that's no, because, the, because it, but these are, these it's are like businesses. a zero-sum game. But these are businesses, Byron. We run businesses. We know how hard it is to run a business. And what they're doing is fucking themselves very hard without any lubrication whatsoever to suit a regime that hates them and that's the fundamental point these people need to really understand but we've covered that how many times man like they, they think if i follow the rules then i'll be exempt from it it's kind of like you know if i follow the rules they leave me alone you know of course the rules are racist and of course they're communists and of course they're anti-capitalist but if i follow the rules they leave me alone but the problem is then that they don't leave you alone no. they become more and more aggressive exactly and before because... you know, before you know it you've lost everything yeah, because you know why? You know why the rules keep uh, escalating? Because you accepted them right. early on. They said, we want 20%. You said, no, 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 let's do 5%. Then they said, yes. And that's when they get you. Because you have already agreed to the terms. All we need to discuss now is the quantum. 100%. 100%. But this is, this is going to keep happening until somebody in South Africa kind of gives up the ghost and just says, you know what? It's actually, these rules are deeply racist they're not actually benefiting anybody look if people actually wanted to and the da came up with this project so yes for you da shills yeah go on just yeah da shills whatever but the da did actually come through with a proposal and this that was actually quite good and the proposal was based on means not based on melanin and it was basically saying if you were financially disadvantaged and you needed a leg up in order to kind of gain an advantage in the in the system you know they would provide those kind of support to a person that was financially without means. So make the mean, make it means tested. Who cares what the Mendelian color is? But that's not the world we find ourselves in now. The world we find ourselves in is that everybody despised apartheid. Everybody despises Jim Crow rules. Everybody despises segregation. They despise it because it was the whites under management. 
But it's okay when the other, when everybody else is under that management. They want those rules. That's the grand irony. Martin Luther King's idea of judge a person based on the constants of the character, not the color of their skin. But that was a fallacy because they actually wanted segregation rules. The actual argument is around who was who was the management. That's actually what the argument comes in. Underneath the old rules, it was under white management. What they actually want now is they want it under black management. And that's once you understand that, you need to kind of look at those rules and then go, well, we either go back to core non-racialism, in other words, Martin Luther King's vision, or we go back to the old apartheid rules, just under new management, and no. you're going to get this, the same shit all over again. Or we can have proudly white-owned companies in that regard. You can't have one and oh, not you the can't other. Do that. I see you can't do that. That's racist. billboards all over the highway saying 100% black-owned company, 100% woman-owned company, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and people love this shit, right? So if you want a 100% black-owned company, cool. Then we can say, not us personally, but another company out there can say 100% white-owned company. And that is the moral nature, whether you take but this you're not allowed to say or that, not. Mate. You're not allowed to say that. It's not, and that's not, again, that's, that's the world we find ourselves in. That's why I say these people want those rules. They just want it underneath different management. Because it's like if we use that old argument, black lives matter, cool. Asian lives matter, cool. Trans lives matter, cool. Gay lives matter, cool. White lives matter, oh, no, you can't say that. That's racist. So you can kind of, it's an old logical trick. If you can say the same statement, but change the, the identifier, that will tell you whether or not you agree with the principle or whether or not it's just actually something specific you like. If yeah. you say lives matter and all you do is you change the identifier between black, white, colored, whatever, and if one of those you find to be reprehensible but everything else is okay, then you know you have a problem. You know it's illogical. And we've seen that. I mean, even in the UK, they have this whole thing where somebody put up a poster of white lives matter and they were like, oh, no, that's, that's hate speech. You need to take it down. That's the world we find ourselves in, mate. And, yeah. and, and what you're going to find is people are going to put up white lives matter and then they will defend it to the death. Because everyone else is doing it for their own little group while they're being left out. This only accentuates every wrong perpetuated that we are trying to overcome. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And if corporates want to take part in it, cool. And they're not getting my money. Not that I shop at this game by any means. For what reason? I don't buy nappies and shit. But yeah, they're not getting my money anymore. Because I just don't believe in the, the core ideology of... The regime and anyone who supports that particular regime treat this game like you would treat the average ANC voter. Not spit on them, but close. So, the, you know, we can close by this, but and my final comment on this is actually a comment that came from our former public prosecutor, not the one that's currently getting impeached, the one before that. And she was very famous for having gone online and said something that was actually rather interesting. And when you actually sat down, you thought about it a lot. There was a lot of truth in it. And she said... BEE -E encourages white supremacy. And you had to kind of look at it and go, well, why would you say that? And the answer was from her, she actually had to clarify because everybody was like, oh, you sell out, you coconut, you know, you, you're the usual racial insults they give her. And she actually had to go on there and, and clarify and say, the more that you artificially inflate a black person and you say, I'm giving you these heads up and I'm doing all these things to allow you to get up above the pile not based on your merits, but basically based on your melanin structures. Every time they fail, everybody who didn't get that leg up will look at them going, see, even with the boost, they're still useless. And so she was, she was very famous for saying, this actually encourages racial supremacy because what you're doing is you, you're almost encouraging people to fail because you're boosting them up, not based on what they can do, but based on who they are. And that in itself is actually a really po important point for us all to understand. Because if we continue to do this, it is going to cause hatred between the races. Every white person that sees a black person pushed above to the head of the queue and then fail, they're going to feel a great degree of resentment for that. Because it was kind of like, well, I didn't get that opportunity and I maybe could have done better. You see, that person's useless and they, they didn't do it. It's going to encourage hatred. These rules are there to try heal a population, and I don't think they are. I actually think they're causing a division in the population. Yeah. And so whilst these rules remain in place, I, I can't see South Africa healing as a country. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the Mornish Hall recommendation is um, the old Martin Luther King adage, take people on uh, their character, not the color of their skin. 
and most importantly, you hire the best person for the job. And if there is a racial discrimination or inequity amongst the uh, professional class, look at the reasons why that is. And maybe start with public education. Just maybe. Just maybe. Yeah. Anyway, have a good weekend, everyone. See you on Monday. Cheers. Bye.